All right, but what we're going to review solving linear equations. Now, these are graphs that if we were to graph them, it gives us a line. So that's what we call it linear equations. Sounds like a line. And we're also going to be dealing with inequalities. Now, inequalities are those that have the signs like greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, less than, or equal to signs. We're going to see those um, in a minute. To begin with, we have to differentiate what's the uh, meaning of expression and equation. Now, an expression are basically operation, mathematical operations, like, you know, 5 times x minus 3. That's what an expression is. I can even add 4x. Like, those are expressions. Those are just operations. Now, equations are separated with an equal sign. So that equation sounds like an equal. I see an equal sign in there. So for my A, that's going to be an equation. On example B, I don't see an equal sign anywhere. So that's what I'm going to call expression. Expressions can only be simplified. I don't know what the value of X is. Just looking at B, I don't know what the value of X is. I cannot solve it. I can only simplify. Now, in equations, example A, I can solve. I can find the value of X that makes that statement true. And in this case, I will say, well, X is equal to 3. We're going to learn in a minute how to solve it. But if I just come and say X is equal to 3, that's the value of X that makes that statement true. Right? Because 3 times 3 minus 7 is 2. That's the only value of X that makes that statement true. So let's learn how to solve. The way we're going to do this is I'm going to separate them through the equal side. I'm going to simplify each of my sides by combining my like terms. I can combine the x's by 4x minus 2x. That gives me 2x and then minus 5. On the other side, I can combine my like terms. So I'm going to have 6x. I'm going to write the x term first, 6x plus 7. Now that I simplify them, I'm going to move the x terms to one side of the equal side and the non-x terms to the other side. I see x's on both sides. By personal choice, I get rid of the smallest x. So I'm going to get rid of the 2x. I'm going to bring it to the right side as a minus 2x. So in this case, I want x's on the right. So my plus 7, I'm going to move it to this side as a minus 7. Simplify each side. Negative 5 minus 7x, that gives me negative 12. And this is equal to 4x, because I combined 6x minus 2x. I don't have the x by itself, so divide by the number in front of the x. And I'm going to say x, in this case, is equal to negative 3. All right, if I substitute the value of x for each of these x's, I'm going to get the same number on both sides. Once again, the solution means which value of x or which value of the variable makes that statement true. If we have parentheses, get rid of them. In this case, let me distribute the 2 to the inside. For distributive, I'm going to multiply it. So I'm going to have 2k minus 10, because I distribute the 2, plus 3k is equal to k plus 6. I'm going to separate my size through the equal sign, combine my like terms. On the left, I can combine the case. So I'm going to have 5k minus 10 equals k plus 6. I cannot do anything on the right side, so I'm just going to write k plus 6. Get rid of the smallest k, so I'm going to bring it to the left as a minus. My negative 10, I'm going to bring it to the right as a plus. Remember, I switched the signs. So I have that 4k is equal to 16, the by both sides by the number in front of the k. So k in this case is 4. Same thing here. Let me get rid of parentheses by distributing a number on the outside. So let me multiply the 4 to the inside. I'm going to have 12x minus 8 equals now one thing from here 
do not think um, uh, we can do 38 minus 2 because the 38 has nothing to do with parentheses. 38 minus 2 is subtraction, and I have to multiply before I subtract. So I have to distribute the negative 2 to the inside before I subtract. So do not go 38 minus 2. All right, once again, the 38 has nothing to do with parentheses. Distribute the negative 2 to the inside. Keep in mind, I'm calling it negative 2 because of the sign in front of it. So I'm going to have minus 4x plus 2. All right, distribute the negative 2 to the inside. So the left side, I'm just going to have 12x minus 8. On the right side, I can combine my like terms. So on the x term, I'm just going to have negative 4x and then plus 40. Move the x's to one side, the non-x's to the other. Negative 4x is the smallest one, so I'm going to move it as a plus 4x, right? I switch the sign. My negative 8, I'm going to move it as a plus 8. So I have 16x equals 48. Divide both sides by the number in front of the x. X in this case is 3. If you don't like fractions, just get rid of them. Looking at my denominators, 6 and 2. Right, I'm just looking at the denominators. I'm going to multiply. I can see that my least common denominator is 6. Right, The smallest number that they all go into. So least common denominator is 6. What I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply each of my terms, like a fraction, a whole fraction, I'm going to call it a term. I'm going to multiply each of my terms by 6. So that's my least common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by 6. I'm going to multiply this whole fraction by 6. And I'm going to multiply this by 6 as well. When I'm multiplying with a fraction in a whole number, what I do, I divide the, the, the number on the outside by the denominator. Once again, I divide, so I'm thinking 6 divided by 6. And my result, I'm going to multiply it to the terms on the top. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. Multiply everything on top of that fraction by 1, and I'm going to get x plus 7. My second fraction, I'm calling it a positive 6 because I'm looking at that sign. If it was a minus, I would be calling it negative 6. So I'm thinking 6 divided by 2 is 3. Multiply that 3 to everything on top. So I'm going to have 6x minus 24. Once again, I went 6 divided by 2, which gave me 3, and multiplied everything on top by 3. And this is equal to negative 24, right? I just multiply negative 4 times 6. Notice I have no more fractions. So on the left side, if I combine my like terms, if I combine the x's, I get 7x. If I combine the other terms, 7 minus 24, I get negative 17. This is equal to negative 24, right? I just combine my like terms on the left. I see only an x on the left, so I want x's on the left side, non x's on the right. So I'm going to move this as a plus 17. So I get that 7x equals negative 7. The Bible size by the number in front of the x. So x equals negative 1. Same thing with decimals. If you don't like decimals, get rid of them. I see that my first term has two decimal places. I'm looking at this. There's two decimal places. This term has two decimal places. This term has two decimal places. So I'm going to move my decimal two places to the right. That's basically saying multiply each term by 100. Which is move the decimal two places to the right. Now, before I continue, if one of the, the terms had three decimal places and the others only had two, I will move the, the decimal three places to the right on all of them just so I get rid of decimals in all of them. So once again here, I'm going to move it twice. So I'm going to have 6x 
plus 9 times 15 minus x 